The heightened state of alert now extends beyond Boston. We're hearing reports officials were forced to clear out parts of LaGuardia Airport in New York. This was for about an hour over concerns about a suspicious, suspicious package, pardon me, in the central terminal building. But it turns out it was only some wires hanging out of a fluorescent light. Still, you can see how everyone's nerves are on edge right now in New York as well as in Boston. So here's where we are right now. The entire U.S. intelligence community is working around the clock globally on all and any leads and for more on what the U.S. president is calling an act of terror I want to bring in security and intelligence expert Alex Holstein joining us live in studio I'm stuttering yeah. everybody's <laughs> on edge uh, what's going on here so now we're finding out uh, okay there could have potentially been something in New York understandably folks mm -hmm. are quite nervous mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I mean the whole country the whole the United States is on alert London's going on alert for its marathon and for uh, uh, Prime Minister Toronto Thatcher's too. May and 6th. Toronto's going on yeah. alert. And Toronto, I don't know. I don't know what the security precautions are that are being taken here. Uh, you see a much more visible presence of the NYPD, which is normal par for the course with the NYPD in mm -hmm. in New York. But I don't know what the Toronto PD are doing. I drove down here uh, today, and I've been driving around the streets, and I don't see any heightened presence or anything yeah. like that. So I'm not my sure understanding kind of is that organizers right now are t are talking to city officials okay. in Toronto about I think it's the Good Life Marathon mm -hmm. uh, about making sure. Or, uh, or rather to see if they need more security, more security in a situation like this. Let's, let's stay with the Canadian angle sure. for a second. We've had the Prime Minister of Canada come out and, and pretty much condemn these bombings mm -hmm. and say that they will do whatever they can to assist the U.S. in this. Uh, how important is it for Canada to stay on top of this Absolutely as well? Absolutely important, uh, not only for uh, Canada's own security, but just for the uh, global uh, terrorism issue uh, in general. Uh, Canada will play a role. Uh, CSIS will be coordinating with the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. I know people on the Joint Terrorism Task Force who've worked directly with uh, CSIS and the RCMP uh, on, on counterterrorism issues, and uh, they will be coordinating uh, with uh, with their allies, uh, mostly NATO, Western uh, intelligence uh, uh, um, agencies, uh, but mainly the Americans and uh, the British as well. So uh, it's very important that uh, in, in today's uh, globalized world that we that intelligence agencies coordinate. And I'm sure Richard Fadden is a is very very uh, um, vigilant on the issue of uh, terrorism. Has no that Toronto is a huge target mm -hmm. uh, for terrorism and uh, I, I imagine that CSIS will play a very active role in trying to uh, uh, keep on top of this issue. Well it's especially troubling since you hear about what's happened in Somalia, you hear about what happened in Algeria and there's unfortunately mm -hmm. a Canadian uh, connection that always sure. seems to uh, spring up uh, more recently than ever before. Uh, let me let me ask you about the motivation perhaps the people behind this attack. Mm -hmm. We know that the president's been very reluctant up until just what an hour ago to say yes this is an act of terror or FBI is investigating mm -hmm. it as such. Uh, but we've heard from two experts on our show earlier today who said, you know, let's be, let's still not be hasty here. Let's not say those two words. Let's not say Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not say Islamic radicalization is in full effect here. But what are your thoughts on that? Could I, this, should we be dismissing that altogether? No, I'm leaning towards it yeah. being a lone wolf, uh, radical uh, jihadist uh, affiliated or at least uh, inspired by Al Qaeda. We have to remember that Al Qaeda, uh, before Osama bin Laden's death, was going through a, a, a sort of uh, infighting as to what course they should take strategically, whether it should be what Al Qaeda in, in the Yemen or what is now the Arabian Peninsula Al Qaeda franchise wanted to push through Anwar al Awlaki, was killed mm -hmm. shortly after bin Laden. Um, which was the lone wolf attacks inspired by internet propaganda through their group, uh, through their magazine, online magazine Inspire, or Bin Laden, who had these grandiose uh, post 9 11 ideas of hijacking Air Force One and, you know, something right out of a Michael Bay movie that uh, he, was, he was pushing towards, but was just uh, completely unrealistic. Uh, Alawaki's strategy was much more realistic to what Qaeda could, could perform at that time, inspiring lone wolves like Major uh, Nad uh, Nadal Hassan in, uh, in, in Fort Hood, who did perform that shooting, mm -hmm. uh, which for some reason isn't classified as a terrorist attack, but was. Um, so I, I think uh, that this could. Could possibly be a lone wolf act uh, because of the crude nature of the device itself. I'm wondering what the detonator was on that device. Yeah. Everyone's focusing on the BBs and the shrapnel. The shrapnel's interesting if, say, it was coated in rat poison, which is something out of the Palestinian territories because uh, rat poison is an anticoagulant, but we haven't seen any bleeding out in the triage, so obviously that wasn't used. But so I'm interested in the detonator. Was it a cell phone detonator like we saw in the Madrid bombings, mm -hmm. something Al Qaeda uh, cribbed off of the IRA and ETA was cell phone detonator? 
detonators. So what, what kind of detonator was used to explode these bombs? But in the meantime, uh, the sophistication is pretty crude. They're unsophisticated uh, devices. And uh, that, that leads me to believe that if it is Islamic radicals, it's, it's, lo it's a lone wolf uh, group or individual acting as such. And it's possible still that it's a domestic terrorist group or a domestic lone wolf, a Tim Timothy McVeigh type. But this wasn't a government for, for, for target. For anyone who thinks that, yeah. you also have the, the president coming out and saying that we've, or the FBI coming out and saying, we've broadened this uh, investigation. Mm -hmm. This is a global mm -hmm. investigation. So for anyone who is saying, no, this is a domestic situation, I would think you can't take much solace in that particular right. Uh, fact. Right. I mean, it, 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 it's more likely that, that's why I'm leaning towards yeah, the, the jihadist. But at the same time, uh, it could it could be domestic, but I also think because of the targeting. Now, everyone's focused on tax day. I think that's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh, Patriots Day um, in Boston is more likely, and Patriots yes. Day also works for Al Qaeda. It doesn't just work for domestic terrorists. Um, it, it also works for Al Qaeda and the marathon itself. They targeted the marathon. They didn't target government buildings. Uh, domestic terrorists tend to target government buildings. We remember Timothy McVeigh hit yeah. the federal building uh, in in Oklahoma City. So. Yeah, absolutely. Look, a lot of questions. We're getting some, you know, trickles of answers mm -hmm. now as the as the investigation carries on. Uh, but still, a lot more to talk about uh, in the days and weeks mm -hmm. ahead. Alex, thank you thank so much you for your time much. today. All right, that is key security expert Alex Holston giving us the latest on the Boston bombings.